My name is Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners, and this video is on encumbrances. So there are three different videos I'm gonna do for this topic because encumbrances involves a lot of material. At the end of each of these, I'm gonna have test questions. So make it to the end, practice these test questions with me. Uh, the three different topics for three separate videos will be easements, restrictions, and liens. So make it to the end. And then at the very end, the next will pop up on your screen. You can just click on the next video, go right into these. These questions, these test questions, this material is good for all 50 states. Doesn't matter what state you live in, these questions and this material is fair game for your real estate exam. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and let's jump right into what is an encumbrance? What is an encumbrance? I want you to screenshot this slide. What is an encumbrance? That way you've got an image of this in your phone. You don't have to watch the video over and over. Although I would love that, but that's not an efficient way to study. So what is an encumbrance? It's a claim against an asset by an entity other than the homeowner. It's something that burdens or limits your title. That's what I want you to remember. It's something that burdens or limits your title. Some examples would be liens, easements, leases, mortgages. These impact the use and the transferability of the property. So stick with me to the end. I'm gonna divide this into three separate videos. At the end of each video, we're gonna do some test questions so you can see how encumbrances are used in different ways that you could see on your real estate exam. This should help you pass. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and uh, let's go into the um, how this works. I had to lose the jacket because it was becoming an encumbrance on me. It was a burden. It was limiting my ability to move. That's because I'm almost 55 and I've gained a little bit of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about restrictions because that jacket was definitely a restriction. That makes it an encumbrance. I'm also trying to make a point here to help you memorize what an encumbrance is. So remember, there's three videos about encumbrances. This one is on restrictions. So I've been doing this 26 years, and some of this you will actually learn. You'll come across uh, during your real estate career. A lot of it you won't. You won't see it again in your career, but some of the things regarding encumbrances will. Now, you're never going to use the word encumbrance. You just, I've never used it in 26 years. Uh, I've never used it, but you have to know it. So, what is a deed restriction? You will come across this because let's say it's your listing uh, once you get your career started and you have a listing and you send the contract to the title company for them to pull uh, title work, they're gonna pull everything about the deed. Any kind of encumbrance that they come across, you're about to hear about. So let's talk about deed restrictions. One of the most common deed restrictions would be homeowners associations. You might have a homeowners association where you live and you have deed restrictions placed on you and your property. What's the purpose of a deed restriction? It's to give them some control over what you can do with your property. It limits the use of a property. That's what deed restrictions do. They limit the use of a property. There's all kinds of different rules dependent on the type of the property. Where can you find deed restrictions? Now, for you as a real estate agent, what you're going to do in the future, you're just going to Ask the title company or whoever's going to do your closing, can they send you a copy of the deed restrictions? Because they are all at public record. That's where you find them. You find the restrictions in public record. Now, let's say it's an HOA. Let's say uh, there's a variety of rules with your HOA. Let's say um, you can't have a boat parked on the driveway. Uh, maybe there's only certain types of um, basketball goals. Maybe you can have a permanent one placed in concrete, but you cannot have the temporary kind that's on wheels that you would wheel around. There, there's a lot of different uh, restrictions that can be in place with a different HOA. Maybe 
uh, your HOA says no renting. Maybe your um, HOA says uh, the deed restrictions, it's a 55 and older community, which means I can go there in just a few, a few months. <laughs> but whatever the deed restrictions are, the inter let's say there is a, a, a problem. The homeowner has violated it. Then the interested party can bring legal action. So the, in this case, the HOA can file legal action against the homeowner if they feel the homeowner is in violation. Now, here's a question. Can the home association enforce deed restrictions? No. Only the court can enforce restrictions. That sounds like a test question. Only the court can enforce restrictions. That's a big one. The HOA does not have the ability to enforce. They can bring legal action and take it into court, but only the court can enforce restrictions. Let's do some test questions and let's play with this, help you practice a little bit, see how this can uh, appear on your real estate exam. Please subscribe. Please give this video a like. A couple of fun things by the, before we go on. A couple of neat things have happened to me in my real estate career, and I know you're about to get into real estate. Uh, after you pass your exam, come back to my channel. I do have a lot of other videos to help you study, though. Lots and lots of test questions. But after you pass, come back because most of my real estate channel is to how to help you make a lot of money in real estate, how to have a huge real estate career. Uh, last year, my team and I, I've got the Go Forth team. Uh, we were paid over a million dollars in commission. We did that the year before that too. I've been at this a long time. Um, I got to be listed in Forbes magazine. There's an article published in each of those years uh, by five-star professionals. And I, I get to be listed as one of the top market leaders in the country by five-star professionals in their article that's published in Forbes. Something that's really neat for me that just happened at the end of uh, 2022 there's a, a, a production company called The American Dream TV Show. It operates in a lot of different cities, and it brought the show here to Kansas City called Selling Kansas City, and I get to be one of the hosts of the TV show. So if you go back into my channel a little bit, you're going to see some TV episodes that I just think is so neat. It's just something that has happened to me after a very long career. Let's get you to pass this real estate exam and do some questions now. Read the first question with me. What would not be enforceable regarding deed restrictions? Number one, verbally issued rules not recorded in public record. Number two, anything listed as being forever. Number three, restrictions based on race, ethnicity, or religious preference. Number four, all of the above. So let's talk about this one a little bit. Number one, let's do a little teaching with this one question. We've got a three questions, or you're going to learn a little bit more uh, from this one especially. Number one, so again, what would not be enforceable regarding deed restrictions? Number one, verbally issued rules not recorded in public record. So when it comes to deed restrictions, they have to be in writing. And they have to be available in public record. They have to be recorded with the courthouse. So they are available in the public record. So that's a couple key things about deed restrictions. Uh, nothing verbal is really enforceable. And so there's a key right there. Number two, anything listed as being forever. So the key there is listed as being forever. That's something that is just not going to be enforceable. It's, um, you don't want anything that's ever listed that says something is going to last forever because nobody knows what could last forever. And something can be revoked. Things can be changed. So that right there is not something that's enforceable either. Being listed forever is not enforceable. Number three, you will see phrases like this throughout your real estate exam. Every real estate commission in the country loves to test you on race, ethnicity, religious discrimination items. So when you see a phrase like that, you're going to want to take that one seriously. 
many times when they include phrases like that, uh, that could be your answer. And in this case, it is too. Uh, you cannot enforce anything that would ever discriminate against any protected class, such as race, ethnicity, or religion. And so your answer is number four. All of the above, none of those can be enforceable regarding deed restrictions. Next question. Deed restrictions on residential property can only be enforced by the number one, homeowners association. Number two, a majority vote of the residents. Number three, the title company. Or number four, court. So that question again, deed restrictions on residential property can only be enforced by the court. Number four is your answer. Only the court can enforce restrictions. Next question. This burdens or places limits on the title to a property. Let's read that again. I want you to memorize this. This one is a big deal. You need to screenshot this, memorize this. This burdens or places limits on the title to a property. And when you see that, I want you to immediately know it's number three. That is the definition of an encumbrance. So here's your options for this. An appurtenance, joint tenancy, an encumbrance, or a granting clause. Um, many people will get confused an appurtenance with an encumbrance just because they kind of sound similar. They're big words and they're words that you just don't, don't use these. And so an encumbrance is when you have something that has burdened or placed limits on the title to a property, that is an encumbrance against the title. Now, what is an appurtenance? What is number one? Well, let's review what is number one. An appurtenance, the thing I want you to remember about an appurtenance is it runs with the land. When you hear that phrase, that's tied kind of with an appurtenance. An appurtenance are things that transfer automatically with the sale of land and what's associated with it. So an improvement is an appurtenance to the land. A house is a big improvement on the land and it runs with the land. It transfers automatically with the sale of land when that title transfers. Um, a shed, an in-ground pool, um, landscaping, all these things that are attached become appurtenances. Uh, rights are also appurtenances, mineral rights, water, light, water rights. Those things are also appurtenances. They automatically transfer because they run with the land. Easements also would run with the land. We're going to talk about that on, a, on another question here in just a moment, on another video. Um, so at this point, uh, so your answer there is encumbrance. An encumbrance is something that burdens or places limits on the title to a property. That's on here on purpose. I want you to memorize that. I cannot even tell you how big of a deal this question is. Um, I want you to know what it is because sometimes in this case, the answer is encumbrance. But let's say the question is about an impertinence and, the, and an impertinence is the correct answer and they're gonna have an encumbrance listed as a wrong choice. If you know, you remember what an encumbrance is, you can eliminate it on another question because you know it's not the correct choice. So it's not that encumbrance is only gonna pop up perhaps once on your exam. You could see it two or three different times used in different ways as a correct answer or a wrong answer. Uh, at this point, something should be popping up on your screen to click on. Those are additional test question videos. Click on either of those. Also, in the remarks, uh, the description. In the description of this video, I'm going to attach some other links to a variety of other questions. Or just go back into my uh, real estate channel, go through all my other videos. I have a lot of different test questions for you. Math questions, 
um, study questions, all different kinds of things to help you pass the real estate exam. Thanks for watching. Give this a, a like if you have not already done so. And please subscribe.